Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Okay, um, this is the second time we're trying, and now I am sure that this is the right message. Hardcore sure. So, we're going to learn about the Lion of Judah. And holy smokes, it's more than I will be fitting in one video. So we're just, we're just going to learn about him. <laughs> Do you know that Jesus is also a lion? Do you know that Jesus is the Lion of Judah? Do you know that if you only focus on and understand the lamb-like aspect of Jesus, you're missing the wholeness of God, of what's available for you, and of God's intention for everything in this earth. So, we're just going to learn about the Lion of Judah real quick. I'm just overflowing. Okay. Ready? Alright. <clears throat> uh, we're sitting outside. Sorry, those are my feet. Alright, very good. Alright. Uh, this is Revelation 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. Whew. I wept and wept because no one was worthy to open the scroll or to look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll in its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Jesus, help me. Okay. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. They sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. They will reign on the earth. Okay, we're gonna, I just gotta, oh my goodness, Lord Jesus. Okay, now we're over here in Genesis 49. We're here because we're, you might have said to yourself, if you didn't say it to yourself, I'll say it to you, so you can say to yourself, well, lion, sure, but why the lion of the tribe of Judah? Well, Judah was one of the sons of Israel. There are 12, 12 tribes of Israel. Judah is one of them. Um, and this is the lion of the tribe of Judah. We could go into the physical, the physicalities of why that matters. That's not what we're going to do. We're just going to read the blessing prophecy that Israel gave to his 12 sons. And we're going to only read Judah's. Okay? All right. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down to you. You are lion's cub, Judah. You return from the prey, my son. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. <laughs> okay. All right. Like a lioness. Who dares to rouse him? Oy. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obe obedience of the nations shall be his. He will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branch. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, his teeth whiter than milk. Okay. All right. Listen trying to go as expeditiously as I can. Um, there's literally so much to learn about this. This is not the last video I will be doing about the line of Judah. Um, I think the last 21 days have been, <laughs> have been the most profound learning of the line of Judah. 
that I never would have known or asked or imagined uh, or figured out how to learn myself. But in 21 days, what I can tell you is these, this is what you need to know first. Um, we need to know that to identify with and as the Lamb of God, dying to self, serving, completely submitting to the will of the Father. I took notes, so let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. That our whole life and any desire is submitted directly to our glorious creator and judge of the universe. He's the rightful judge of the universe because he is the creator of the universe. And he is the holy God. Um, my whole, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, my whole life and desire submitted. So I'm submitted to his judgment of me, his verdict or his word of what is good for me, what is good for me to do, to eat, to say, how to live. My entire life is his. That would be being a lamb of God. This is also if we dwell too long in the lamb of God, we might forget the lion. And we might start praying the things that sound like desperation. We might start asking for revival as if it's not 100% already available to us. Which is a whole other topic. But, um, instead of commanding with alignment and alliance to, allegiance to, the rightness of understanding our identity in the Lion of Judah, that is Jesus. Now, um, how, how do we live as the lion? To rise up against every evil thing in the name of Jesus. To be filled with the spirit of the lion. How does that happen? As we stare into his blazing fire eyes that melt our being into liquid love that transforms us into his original and glorious intention for us. The actual us that we are created to be. It's not discoverable outside of being filled with with his fire, which comes from meditation, staring into the eyes of the lion. Yeah. Burn your soul into a liquid love form that can be molded into who he sees you as, which is always who you were, and the only way that you'll be accessing the entirety of you, including all of the potential that you need to carry the existence of you out into the earth. God is the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Capital W. Imagine that we are all words. One tiny word. Maybe we say the word is like the entire encyclopedia of words. But we call it the word. I am a word in one chapter of one volume of the encyclopedia. I will not know who I am without God. And even if I can figure out that I am just going to pick a random word. You know what? The. Just the. I will not have any idea what my context is, my mission is, my purpose, the meaning of my placement, anything about my surroundings. I will not, I will not know. I will not know unless I am in Jesus. Because when I'm in Jesus, the context literally recreates our awareness of everything. Stop ranting, Samantha. Keep going. To be the lion, to be like the lion, is to breathe in the life of God, resurrecting us from the good and proper humility that we need as the lamb, knowing our weakness and guilt and imperfection. True. Um, which Jesus was not imperfect. The point is, dying to self. Um, to be the lion. Last thing. Is to be resurrected by the breath of God, purified in his eternal flood water, that washes us, washes us of all remnant attachments to evil, energized into the healed state, energized by being filled with him in his presence that we are like spontaneously healed into the existence that we are meant to have. Empowered by the victory of Jesus, by his authority equipping us with boldness in his rightness, bearing the sign of his glory walking out his kingdom by eternal transformation into greater glorious state 
glory to glory, becoming more refined in the fire daily, losing all of what we were and not only becoming clearly more like him, but so uniquely representing him that the world transforms in actually mind-blowing ways. So uniquely representing him, which is knowing the humility of I am a word in a giant encyclopedia. But without me there, the encyclopedia does not make the full amount of sense that God desires it to make to people who read it. And without knowing my meaning and context, my design, my vision, my purpose. I'm sorry, this is shaking. It's shaking because I'm hitting the chair. All right, listen. I gotta stop. I gotta stop because there's too much. All I want to say is, he can and he will. And do you trust him?